Welcome to this special edition of Made in the Triad. When you think of summertime, you think about cookouts, you think about picnics. We are about to tempt your taste buds, and I'm gonna get ready to do that. Take a look what else we have in store for you. And anybody who went through high school, and didn't matter which high school, but in Greensboro, has to have a lot of memories about the, about the castle. And that's what we called it, the castle. It's boring castle sauce. It may actually look like the shape of something. I'm not sure what. <laughs> we also visit with GT Clayworks out at the Piedmont Triad Farmer's Market. Okay, I'm really going to put a sofa together. And no tools are required. And I'm put to work with a high point company that makes sofas that can fit in any size room. We've got quite a spread here from cornbread to barbecue, three bean salad, even brownies. What do all these things have in common? BS sauce. When you look at your company and you look at the sauce, it is a personal thing. I get excited about it, yes I do. He should, he created the sauce. People taste it and they just go, that's good. And then they finger taste it again and they say, that's really good. And then the third time it's like, I guess I can say that's damn good. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you're allowed to say that on TV. It's no secret, Bill Staley, he is full of personality. So is his sauce. Another friend and I, we cooked in, in barbecue competition, and we always used his, his sauce. I had to cook for about 50 people on Saturday, and my friend Wayne was gone. So I said, I've got to make a barbecue sauce or something. That was seven years ago. Today, his sauce has a name. People would say, how would you describe BS sauce? I can't. You can't? I can't. But uh, you made it. No straight answers. But that's not why they call it BS sauce. Most people that know me understand the BS. Uh-huh. Yeah. Of course, it is my initials. Right. 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 We jokingly discussed about having using BS sauce from the beginning of the meal from your salad all the way through to your dessert. A cooking sauce for a dessert? All right, all right, all right. We're gonna get to that in just a minute. It certainly piqued my interest. Is there anything that the sauce is not good for? I haven't found it. Not yet. I haven't found it. Today's menu? So Flo's hamburger patties, of course you got the hamburger, and of course you have to have the BS sauce. Let's get cooking. Add a side of fresh veggies. Zucchini, squash, tomatoes. All marinated in the sauce. Ironic, but it's the lack of something. It smells great. That makes this sauce taste so good. I decided to make it clean. I, so I took all the high fructose corn syrup out of it. Another good thing? Staley chose North Carolina companies for his labels packing, so the sauce seeps into the pockets of local families. You are affecting people's lives. I try not to because it's, it's overwhelming. I just, it's just a sauce. It's a good cooking sauce. Enjoy it. But so much more. Yes. Yes, it is. Okay, it is eating time. And you have to try a little bit of everything, since everything is made with the BS sauce. Everything, everything, everything. Yumminess. <clears throat> As you can see, it was all really good. We haven't tried it on ice cream and brownies yet. Ice cream, brownies, BS sauce? Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. Uh, but I just ate it. And that's no BS. <laughs> I just ate it on a hamburger. Here we go. Oh, that's good. That's good. I'm yes. surprised. That's good. All right, it's not straight BS sauce. It's BS sauce with some caramel, with some honey, and that's good. Okay, so I've cooked, I've tasted, and I've definitely eaten, and now we're on to another company. We're here at the corner of West Market Street and Walker, and those trees, well, they may look a little nondescript to you, but they're the only thing left standing from the original Boar and Castle restaurant. It was a staple here in Greensboro for more than 50 years, and while the restaurant is gone, the taste and the sauce lives on. Oh, it goes back a long way. The history. I miss it very much so. The taste. A lot of memories the desire to go back in time. And anybody who's, who went through high school, and didn't matter which high school, but in Greensboro, has to have a lot of memories about the, about the castle. And that's what we called it, the castle. Right here at the corner of West Market and Walker Avenue in Greensboro, once stood a Greensboro landmark. 
it was a gathering place. In size, the Boring Castle wasn't all that big, but it served up more than its share of what many remember as the best hamburgers and onion rings around. It uh, was the place to go on the weekends, and of course you had to have onion rings and castle sauce. The restaurant closed its doors in 1980, but the famous Greensboro invented sauce is the same. It's a great general purpose sauce. The bottling of the sauce never stopped, but the availability was limited. That is until Boyd Morris stepped in. You see, Morris enjoyed the Boren Castle since the 40s. He not only wants to preserve the past, he wants to bring that flavor to the masses today. It's exciting to, to be able to make sure that that is going to still be there. Uh, for all the families that enjoy it so much. Morris took over the distribution and manufacturing in 2009, and the old timers, well, they took notice. I can't even give you a number, but it's tons of emails that I have gotten over the past year or two, uh, just basically saying thank you for getting the sauce back. For them, it is more than a sauce. It's a reminder of a time gone by. Warms my heart. And it's going to warm your taste buds, too, because the sauce now comes in a 12-ounce bottle, opposed to the 5-ounce that most knew. It got used up in a week, and, and people would like to have it in a larger bottle. The sauce's popularity centers around the Piedmont, but the distribution territory, well, it's expanded to four states. And Morris's expectation is... I like to take it nationwide, at least. For now, he's going to settle for one shelf at a time. Coming up, two Piedmont companies that dish out some summertime treats. We use really high quality cheese and extra sharp cheddar and very little mayonnaise. And it's such a simple recipe without preservatives. It, it tastes homemade. Mmm, mmm, one of my favorite Southern foods, pimento cheese. We'll take you to my three sons. We make over 300 flavors. That's ice cream, sorbet, gelato, sherbet. And the perfect complement to any meal it's Blue Ridge ice cream. When you think of My Three Sons, your mind immediately goes to that 60s sitcom. But a Greensboro woman wants you to think of her company and pimento cheese. In 2010, I really had no plan whatsoever to start a pimento cheese company. And chances are Cheryl Mitchell Barnett might not have, but... My middle son, John, sort of challenged me and said, Mommy, you've been talking about this pimento cheese ever since I was a baby. You see, Barnett has always enjoyed pimento cheese, but not just any pimento cheese. It's her recipe. She knows, um, you know, just how good it is, and it's such a great recipe. The she was Linda Emfinger, who Barnett affectionately calls Emmy. From 1988 until present, I've always made her pimento cheese. Barnett wanted others to enjoy it as much as she did. I thought, gosh, you know, it would be so much fun to make this pimento cheese and sell it at the farmer's market. Unfortunately, the farmer's market was full at the time and not accepting new vendors. Not to be deterred, she turned to another market, the fresh market. I knew that they were locally located here in Greensboro. And so we debuted October 31st of uh, 2010. My Three Sons Pimento Cheese became more than just a talking point. I actually went into the stores and handed out samples, and I think we sold out within about two hours. Excited with the possibilities, she reached out to other grocers like Whole Foods and Harris Teeter. And you just sit and wait and pray and cross your fingers. Ah, yes, the power of prayer. My Three Sons is now sold regionally from D.C. all the way to Florida. I mean, to think that we've grown from Greensboro to D.C., um, I mean, that to me is pretty exciting. And why the name? Easy, William, John, and Michael. And because there are three sons, there are three varieties. The original flavor is based upon Emmy's recipe, and that's called Emmy's Original. Not to be outdone, 
Try the fire roasted jalapeno. We use a jalapeno that has been fire roasted. It gives it a little bit of a smoky flavor. And the spicy white cheddar. It's made with an extra sharp Vermont white cheddar that's been aged for nine months. So what would Emmy think of her recipe now? It is one of my fondest memories. She, she loved it. Now that you've had your pimento cheese sandwich, it is time to indulge in one of my favorite things, ice cream. Did you know that there is an art form to scooping out ice cream and an art form to making ice cream? And Blue Ridge Ice Creams, they know how to do it right. What we wanted to do was really put hands on and make things from scratch. Here's the scoop on this 25-year-old business. We make over 300 flavors. In the mix for today, raspberry sorbet, Mexican vanilla gelato, and ice cream sandwiches. That's what they look like when they're done. All this yumminess came to be because of an unappetizing job search. My background is in food science, and I looked around Winston-Salem and there was not a big food company that I could work at. So Deborah Lee and her husband Scott did the next best thing and churned out their own company and named it after a North Carolina landmark. We thought of the Blue Ridge Mountains and regional identities, so that's how Blue Ridge Ice Creams came to be. But that's not the only Tar Heel confection, or shall we say, North Carolina connection. Of course, the main team here is Wake Forest, so um, we have the Wake Forest um, oil, which is cookies and cream, but it is in the colors of the school. Of course, they have the old standbys like chocolate and vanilla, but the top seller for almost a quarter of a century is... We've become known for our, our key lime pie flavored ice cream. So I had to ask, anything unusual flavor-wise? Oh, what, what was the one that we tried? On a whim, we created a chocolate spam. This was ages and ages ago. We do make a maple bacon honey pecan red pepper. I tried a coconut green chili. Maybe a local flavor will sound, I mean, <clears throat> taste better. Sweet tea and barbecue sauce? It might work. I do make a sweet tea and somebody just asked me if I made a hard, hard sweet tea, and I said, well, I can if you want me to. Hmm, not so sure. Let's get back to the tried and true flavors. And in the wintertime when we have our peppermint stick ice cream, they all come back to get that. It's become a, you know, tradition. In the end, the real treat for this business is the reaction they get from customers. Yeah, the satisfying thing is when I'm talking to the customers and they come and say, I got to have this or I got to have that. So it keeps me going because I get that positive feedback. Mm. This ice cream is so good. And you may say to yourself, okay, I can't get there to Winston-Salem. No worries. Blue Ridge Ice Creams, they cater events, which is a good thing because the next event that I'm about to do, it's not resting, it's not relaxing, it's working. Okay. Get water on both hands. And okay. I apologize for getting clay on your ring. It's all good. I try my hands at clay making. <sighs> me in a wood shop. I know, stick around to see it. So I don't think I've ever bought any furniture. And why would he, when he can create furniture that looks like this? We'll introduce you to Bruce Bradford and his company, Bradford Custom Furniture. Maybe I should have looked at the instructions, right? Because it tells me, put them on the side and then turn it over. But that's not how I would have done it. Okay. But next we visit the furniture capital of the world, where in this instance, some assembly is required. They say an eight-year-old can do it. Let's see if I can. It's all shipped, unassembled. The customer puts that furniture together in 15 minutes with no tools. It's Simplicity Sofas. Welcome back. You know, it never fails. You buy a beautiful piece of furniture and you know it's going to look great in your house. Problem is you can't get it in your house through the doorway. So there's a solution. It's called Simplicity Sofas. That sofa right there looked like this sofa. It needs to be put together and it's only four easy steps. Let's get working. Here we go. Righty tighty lefty loosey. Looking like a sofa. Let's tell you their story. We are the only 
furniture company in this country that specializes in seating for small rooms. This small company is big on ideas. Everything we make looks like normal furniture. And that's because it is, with one exception. It's all shipped unassembled. And that is the whole idea from Jeff Frank, a 35-year furniture executive. One thing I noticed was that uh, 5% of all sofas that we sent out to customers came back on the truck because the drivers couldn't get the sofa into the house or into the room where the people wanted it. So he decided to create furniture that fits anywhere. Fitting through narrow doors and narrow stairways where other furniture can't fit. Frank's Furniture Fix, a company called Simplicity Sofas. And the emphasis, well, it's on simple. The customer puts that furniture together in 15 minutes with no tools. Simplicity Sofa started a little over four years ago when most companies were closing their doors. The factory uh, opened in uh, November of 2007, uh, exactly three weeks before President Bush went on TV to announce that the country was officially in recession. Not to be deterred, Frank forged ahead and went looking for a location for his new company. The Maryland native chose High Point. When we opened, I was told that uh, we were the first new furniture factory in High Point in over five years. Now no longer the new kids on the block, the company ships out 40 to 50 sofas a week. Everything uh, is made by us in our factory. And customers, they have options. Our furniture is available not in just a few styles. Nope. They have more than 20,000 variations of sofas and chairs for you to choose from. And when the company looks for patterns, they don't have to look far. The best-selling fabric line we have is American-made. In fact, it's made in Winston-Salem. Triad-based, but sold all over. We've shipped every state except Hawaii. And the number one destination, you guessed it. The number one location is, is New York City. Whew. Not too bad for a few minutes' work. I think I'm ready for my next project. From do-it-yourself to doing it like no one else, I'm here with sculptor Jay Rotberg of JMR Sculptures, and he's going to help me turn this with this into a sculpture. Yes, indeed. Okay, we're going to work on it. Take a listen to his story. I used to do this as a hobby. As a, as a young boy, I used to, used to draw. But at that time, uh, that, that wasn't a great profession. So instead of pursuing art, Jay Rotberg became... A professor. You, although I was working in university, I carved and carved, and, and it was fun. And then Rotberg, the professor, had a light bulb moment. And I said, maybe I could do this. So the self-taught artist began to create figurines. And one day I had an opportunity to leave university, and I said, I'm going to do what I've been doing for years. I'm going to carve. Ten years ago, he did just that, and he opened up JMR Sculptures in Greensboro. But I started to. Uh, to do sculptures of things I saw. And now, that picture in his mind is for all to see. I do uh, lovey-dovey sculptures about families and children, and hopefully all things that, that people like to see. Like this one, called Daddy's Little Girl. It's all about families, it's all about children, it's all about togetherness. At first, pictures and books were his inspiration, but then he turned to real people, strangers even, that he met on the street or in a park. There's no doubt in my mind. Uh, a number of sculptures I have are, are people in the street, and I walk up to them and say, hey, I'm going to make a sculpture out of And I've done that often. And I found two people under an umbrella, and I said, I'm going to use you. And I had a sculpture called Undercover, Love Undercover. His craft can now be found all over the country. Art Institute of Chicago uh, store and uh, other museums. But his signature piece of art is right here. A cup of coffee, please is a commemoration of the sit-in movement. And I want to try to convey my feelings, my feelings about family, my feelings about working together. And while he has sold hundreds of thousands of sculptures, the real satisfaction he gets is when someone walks into his studio and is then inspired by one of his creations. Um, hopefully you will come down and, uh, and buy them uh, and, and look at them and, and feel joy. That's my mantra these days, let there be joy, let there be joy. This piece of wax right here has turned into this. Not too shabby for a first timer. Sofas, sculptures, what's next? When you come to the farmer's market, you know you're gonna see great fruits and veggies. You're gonna come home with a lot of good stuff. How about coming home with art lessons and a skill that you can use for the rest of your life? 
nestle between the tomatoes and the greens. And this is about a two and a half or three pound ball of clay. Master potter Gunther Top puts his stamp on yet another piece of art. Each potter has his own fingerprint, if you will. Top got his start some 30 years ago, all thanks to a college roommate. He taught me um, some things about art when I was a psychology major. No longer studying the shape of the mind, he concentrates on creating clay collectibles. Pottery really gives me um, a sense of ownership, something that I can do and I can do well. Top doesn't work in a stuffy studio. Instead, he prefers to work in Colfax at the Piedmont Triad Farmers Market. It's a venue that his customers have grown to like too. I've had uh, customers uh, actually from out of state that stop by and see the farmer's market and say, oh, let's go in there and look. And lo and behold, they find me. His pottery has function and it's intended to be used. And I encourage everybody to use this functional pottery uh, in their house, in their kitchen. All told, he has about 15 different products. Anything from mugs, to five-tiered oil lamps. And while it takes a lot of work to make this happen, he doesn't really consider it a job at all. This is not a job uh, that you love what you're doing, then you really do not come to work. You never have a day of work. For him, his just reward is when one of his creations finds a home. The best part of that is having uh, a customer come in and seeing something that I made and they like it. Uh, that really gives me the real sense of accomplishment. I'm having a great time at my first pottery lesson. You can do the same for a minimal fee and you get to take your pottery home. Always, absolutely. Okay, and I'm hoping to take something that looks like this home with me. How much more work do I have to do? Um, waiting a little bit, putting a handle on it when okay. it dries. All right, and so hopefully very soon I will have a coffee mug that looks like this, a perfect mug, and now I just need a perfect place to sit and sip my coffee. Finding the perfect place to sit with my cup of coffee? Difficult. Unless, of course, you make it yourself. So, I thought I'd just whip up this table and chairs. Pretty nice lines, don't you think? Did a good job. Who am I kidding? I didn't do this, but I know the person who did. I like to think of myself as a designer and a craftsman. Bruce Bradford has always had the skill to craft with his hands. When I first moved here, you know, something I did after work. But now the hobby is his work. But it was only after I decided to switch careers in 99 that I really started taking woodworking seriously. Each day amongst the blades, the lumber, the sawdust, Bradford designs and builds chairs, tables, and really just about anything that you can put in your home. Along the way, he built a company and called it Bradford Custom Furniture. A lot of my stuff that I do is, is can considered contemporary and sculptural. All of his one-of-a-kind work is commissioned by the client. I've never had anyone not like anything. And I do know that they're always showing it off to people. And maybe that's the nicest compliment, is, is the fact that they want to show it to other people. And his client base stretches from the triad to California and overseas. And I did do two chairs for a gentleman that used to live here in town, but was transferred to Germany. And, uh, he really wanted those chairs because the shipping ended up being more than the chairs. Today's project, a table and six chairs. Once you do the first one, you kind of get hooked and you want to do more and more and more. All told, he has created more than 170 pieces over the course of his career. But he finds the greatest enjoyment in meeting the people that want his furniture that also turn out to be works of art. I don't make furniture as much as I make friends. And it's kind of like meeting the clients and working with them, because there is a lot of interaction. Shaping friendships while performing a job he thoroughly enjoys. To me, it's fun. Um, it's something I like to do. I love Mr. Bradford's story. The problem is, I don't think the video does it justice when you actually get to put your hands on this type of furniture. How do you even get to make this kind of thing? Well, you have a mentor, and Bradford had a mentor in Sam Maloof, and you might know his name because he has created rocking chairs for President Reagan, President Carter. He even has one in the Smithsonian. You know, you never know what you're gonna learn during a Made in the Triad special. We hope that you've enjoyed this one. We'll see you next time. Have a good night.